Happy Friday. Welcome to Google SAS Office Hours. My name is Su Wei Wu, and I am a partner engineer on the Google SAS team. Today, we'll be discussing day one versus day two in the life of a grant. Here's the agenda. First, we'll walk through a couple of grant suspension scenarios and then offer our recommendations in handling those suspensions. At the end, we'll open up for a Q&A session, but as always, you are welcome to post questions in the YouTube chat window at any time during the presentation. If you've never used chat on YouTube, please note that you will have to be logged in to post questions. Also, please note that there is a delay of up to a few minutes in the video stream, so I may not see your questions until later on down the line. And as always, if you think of a question after this session is over, you can always ask sas-support at google.com. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna kick off the session with a question for you. What is the difference between a day one grant and a day two grant? I'll give you a few moments to think about this. Feel free to say your answer out loud. Um, nobody will know that you got the right answer, right or wrong. So the answer to this question is CPAS. What is CPAS? Well, CPAS stands for Coordinated Periodic Activities Among the SASs. So every night, all the SASs exchange information about their CBSDs and their grants. They also check for updated incumbent information. And last but not least, uh, the SASs will calculate the total interference created by the grants on the incumbents. So let's move on to our first scenario. So in this scenario, uh, we have a CBSD that is near a protected zone. And let's say on day one, this device makes a grant request and receives a grant response indicating success. However, on the first heartbeat, the device gets a 501 suspended, suspended grant IAP pending message. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the SAS is unable to authorize the grant at the power requested. So using this um, pie analogy I have here in the slide, um, what this essentially means is that the SAS has no more apple pie left for today, but the SAS might have some apple pie for you tomorrow. So as we talked about before in the previous slide, during CPAS, the SAS will check to see if there's any apple pie left for you in the shared pantry. If there is, then after CPAS, the SAS will return in the heartbeat response um, a message indicating that you should re-request your grant with the suggested parameters. Okay, that's great and all, but what happens if I can't wait for day two for my pie? Well, in that case, you can request a new grant with different parameters. To help you determine what those parameters um, could be for your new grant, you can check um, availability of spectrum using the spectrum inquiry request, or um, you can use the SAS portal. Please note that the spectrum inquiry request will give you the power available today, whereas in the SAS portal, you can see the power available on day two. So 
So let's move on to the next scenario. In this scenario, the CVSD is in one or more DBA neighborhoods. In this case, the grant will be added to the DBA move list corresponding to all these DBA neighborhoods on day one. We'll talk a little bit more about DBA neighborhoods and DBA move lists in the next slide, so bear with me. So if one or more, let's say one or more of these um, DPAs um, gets activated, in this case, the grant will be susp suspended. During CPAS, the SAS will determine whether the grant causes interference to these DBAs. If it determines that it does not, then the SAS will move this grant off those DPA move lists. And you will see that in the first heartbeat response after CPAS, um, the grant will, if the grant is no longer on a move list of an activated DBA or active DBA, the device will be authorized to transmit. Okay, let's take a closer look at DBAs. Um, I put this slide together because lately um, SAS support has received a lot of questions regarding grant suspensions due to DBA activations. So the first point I'd like to make is that a DBA neighborhood extends up to 400 kilometers from the DBA. And let me bring up the next slide because pictures are worth a thousand words. So once again, um, I'll repeat this. Um, how big is a DBA neighborhood? It is 400 kilometers from the DBA. So you can see here in this slide, um, <clears throat> the DBA extends all the way to that inner red line. So all CBSDs that fall within that red line are on the move list on day one. So going back to the previous slide, um, the next bullet, um, this next bullet may seem obvious, but um, like the first one, we fielded a lot of questions around what does 501 suspended grant due to a DBA active activation mean? So what does it mean? It means that one or more of the DBAs for that grant has been activated, and therefore the SAS had to suspend the grant in order to protect the incumbent. So last but not least, during CPA, uh, CPAS, the SAS will calculate interference of all CBSDs and grants on the incumbents. And in this example here, it will determine if that grant interferes with the DBA. So you can see all this in the SAS portal. So on day one, in that screenshot on the left, um, you can see that this grant has been placed on several move lists. And you can see those move lists in the SAS portal. And then during CPAS, in this example, the SAS determined that the grant did not cause interference to the DBAs and removed the grant from those move lists. So if we go back to here, to the map, you can see that in most likelihood, if the um, CBSD is in this clear area, that most likely during CPAS, the CBSD will be moved off the DBA move list. Okay, let me move to the next slide. So what's our recommendation in this 
scenario. Our recommendation is to continue to heartbeat on the grant through CPAS. And after CPAS on day two, as in this example, the grant may be moved off the DBA move list if it's determined not to interfere with the DBA. Okay, a quick slide on the future of Google SAS office hours. Um, this is the last office hours as we know it today. But uh, don't be sad, we are instead offering double the fun. First, we'll be hosting a Welcome to Google SAS series that will cover how to get started with Google SAS and include demos and tips on how to take advantage of all the wonderful features in the Google SAS portal. The second series will offer deep dives into topics around CBRS and the Google SAS roadmap. Please, please join us for either or both of these series. Okay, um, so we've uh, reached our Q&A session. Um, as we mentioned before, please ask any questions that you have on the YouTube chat window. Um, and I will switch over. And uh, yeah, please post on the YouTube chat window. It should appear, oh, question just came in. It should appear on the, to the left, or sorry, to the right of the video screen. So I have a question coming in from Patrick. The question is, is there a feature to search for CBSDs by serial number? Um, and I assume, obviously, this is in the Google SAS portal. So we do plan in, um, on the roadmap, um, uh, we don't have it today, but we do have it on the roadmap to be able to search and filter um, by CBSD serial number in the list view um, and also in the map view. Um, today, um, the best way to find a CBSD if you have um, the serial number is to determine the latitude and longitude and enter those into the search of the map. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then the map will um, center in on that latitude and longitude um, where the CBSD resides. And then you can click on the icon on the map and you can see the details of the CBSD in the SAS portal. Um, I am told that um, it is on the roadmap, the ability to search by CBS, search CBSD by serial number. It, it is on the roadmap for later this quarter. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if you have additional questions or if anyone else has questions, please post it on the YouTube chat. We have a question that just came in from Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Um, the question from Lucas is, is a new grant always suspended on day one? Um, no, um, a new grant is not always suspended on day one. However, in that one scenario where a, C, uh, a CBSD is located in a DBA neighborhood, um, in that particular situation, um, a new grant is always suspended on day one. I'm oh, sorry, let me, let me take that back. Um, that's incorrect. So a new grant is always placed on um, the DBA move list um, of all the DBA neighborhoods in which that device resides. Now, the, that grant will be suspended only if one or more of those DBAs are activated. So, so really the answer is no, it's not always suspended on day one. 
it's suspended on day one if it is on um, a move list um, for a DPA that has been activated. I hope uh, I hope that's clear. Sorry for the uh, stumble at the beginning. Um, let me know if um, this isn't clear by following up with additional questions posted to the YouTube chat.